Hi, you guys. I hope everybody's good today. Um, I have another word for you. Um, I just have to be honest with you guys. I have been in a little bit of a funk um, the last few days. Um, I kind of just been going through it. And so this morning, I, you know, I get up every morning. I'm still in prayer. I still do my regular routine. But I just been kind of under the weather, like, you know, under attack, basically. And so, um, you know, I've been trying to get my testimony out to you guys and maybe that kind of, you know, just anyway. So this morning I'm just sitting there with the Lord and I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just kind of, I, I kind of was sitting there and quiet for, for a few minutes. I was just sitting there and I was just quiet and he said, what is wrong? This is God our father this is this is who he is he says what is wrong what can I do for you that's what he said to me what can I do for you how can I make you feel better you know and I just felt like such a jerk you know what I'm saying it's just like I did I felt like a little bit of a jerk I'm just like why am I in such a pooter pants way you know and um, anyway, he said, this is a battle, Emily, this is a battle and you've got to fight. You have to fight back and you can't let him win because he's trying and you can't allow him to win. This is war. You got to put, you know, pick up your sword and fight. And so he said, I've called you to do something and you need to do it. And the enemy wants to, to take that from you. And so don't allow him. And, you know, the last couple of days, literally, I've cried and I've asked God, like, am I supposed to be doing this? Is this what you've called? You know, am I, am I in your will? And that was just the enemy's lies for me to even ask that question. And he told me, the Lord said to me specifically, he said, I didn't allow you to go through hell for nothing. That is what his words were. Exactly. I didn't allow you to go through hell for nothing and I was like okay all right then you know and so um, he said basically I need you to continue doing what you're doing you need to so so on top of that we're sitting there and we're having a little chit chat God and I and um, I just looked at my phone my and it says 9-11. Um, but anyway, um, so we're sitting, right as I'm getting ready to say this, um, we're sitting there having a chit-chat, and, and all of a sudden, I'm like, we're having an earthquake. I was like, Lord, we're having an earthquake, aren't we? As he's talking to me, telling me, you need to, you need, you need to continue doing what I'm do, what I've asked you to do, because you have to encourage my people at this time, you know, you have to do what I've asked you to do. And so, um, you know, and don't let the enemy win. So anyway, as he's telling me this, an earthquake happens, you know, w you know, and I'm just like, okay. And I feel it and I'm sitting there, I'm walking with it. I'm like, okay, Lord, you got my attention, you know, cause you guys know I'm all about earthquakes. I've told you guys this before. God knows I've been, you know, I've been through two major earthquakes in my life in Southern California, the Northridge one and the Whittier quake. I went through both of those and they were pretty traumatic for me. My, both of my experiences were pretty traumatic during those two earthquakes. So I've been an earthquake person, you know, I, you know, I follow them. I, you know, and so last night, first and foremost, my daughter called me, my 16 year old daughter who lives in Southern California with her dad. Um, she called me the night before last and said, I'm kind of getting off here, but, but not really. Cause this is important. This is super important. Um, he, she calls me, she says, mom, I had this really weird dream. And I was like, well, tell me about it. And she goes, well, there, we were in this high rise. We were in this, like, like a high rise hotel, like I think in Vegas. She goes, I don't know for sure it was Vegas, but it looked like it because there was desert. And she, and she said that there was a big earthquake. But there was like an alarm system that had said that there was going to be an earthquake or whatever. Anyway, she said me and her sisters and, you know, 
some of her really closest friends and um, friends of the family were all in the dream, but her dad was not in the dream. And she couldn't understand why her dad wasn't in the dream. And I told her, I go, this sounds prophetic to me. I said, this sounds like a prophetic dream. And um, anyway, she said, and as soon as I went running around everywhere, because everybody was kind of scattered, she goes, um, as soon as I went running around and I found everybody and everybody was okay, I woke up. And I was like, that's definitely a prophetic dream. And I said, you know, God's been talking about earthquakes. And I said, and, you know, and so maybe God is saying, just letting you know that everybody's going to be okay. You know, maybe God is just giving you a dream, you know, because we probably will have an earthquake, you know, a big earthquake. God's talked about it, you guys. You know, when? I don't know. But God has talked about earthquakes, especially on the West Coast. Um, and so, anyway... So I t so we were talking about this yesterday. We we're talking about her dream, and I and, and I said maybe your dad wasn't in the dream because he's going to be with you because you're with your dad and you'll know he's okay. So, but everybody else, all your family, your close family, you know, your myself and your sisters, and um, you know, we're not with you. And so God is saying everybody's going to be okay. You know. So anyway, so then last night I'm looking at my earthquake app as I do every single night. And there was a, we sold our house in Bonnie Lake, Washington a year ago. Okay. They're almost to the, you know, we, we've been in the glory goal for a year. And so, um, anyway, so then last night I look at my earthquake map and there's an earthquake in Bonnie Lake. I told my husband, I go, oh my gosh, honey, there was an earthquake in Bonnie Lake yesterday. I go, that is so weird. I've never seen that before in all these years that I've been checking my earthquake app and whatever. I go, I've never seen an earthquake in Bonnie Lake. And then I go looking down and I, and you know, and then it was one in San Juan Bautista is where I'm at, where we're at, where we're at now. And I said, honey, there was an earthquake here today. I said a small earthquake right here in San Juan Bautista. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but anyway. And so he's like, that is strange. And I said, Hmm. And I just sat back and I thought, I go, Lord, you're getting my attention. You know that I'm your earthquake girl and you're getting my attention. So anyway, and then this morning as he's telling me, I need to step up to the plate. I need to fight the enemy and I need to get on here and quit questioning my call. Then as he's speaking to me this and he's telling me, he says, you need to continue to do what I've asked you to do. And you need to rise up and you need to fight back and you need to fight hard. And so... We are under attack, you guys, period. You know, especially those who God has called to, to, you know, prophesy and to, you know, there's attacks going on. And yes, we do have to fight. And, you know, and I had to, I, I, I've had, you know, I've had to repent and ask God to forgive me for doubting my call. And, um, you know, he's, I had to go through stuff, you know, in order to, to get to this point where he could trust me. And so now that I'm talking about it, I may as well just give a little bit of my testimony. So I'm not going to give you all the details. I'll just let you know that I, I, I've been basically, I've loved the, I've loved the Lord since I was a little girl. I was born and raised in a Christian home, spirit filled home. I loved Jesus my whole life. I wasn't one of the, I, I wasn't a, you know, I didn't, I didn't ever turn away from the Lord and say, Oh, you know, like some people where they're raised in church and then they're like, oh, I got to go and, and, um, I'm going to turn from God because of all the religion and blah, blah, blah. No, I always loved the Lord. I always wanted to please the Lord. I was always close. My heart was always close. I, you know, my heart never turned from God, but I'm going to tell you something. When you love Jesus, no matter if you start from the beginning, you know, from when you were little or when you first become born again, if you're radically saved, you're going to immediately, you are an enemy of Satan. You are a target for him. He will target you. And if you were born into a Christian family and you love the Lord Jesus, and that's how you, you're a target period. And he's going to be relentless and ruthless. And that's what he did to me. I was afflicted with addiction my whole life, my whole life. I was crack cocaine, methamphetamine, alcohol, marijuana, all of them at all different times. I've been addicted to all of them. And I struggled and battled with each one at different times. So I'd overcome one and then I got on another and then I'd overcome one and then I got on another. And then, you know, just, you know, that's what I've been through. Okay. And so through all this time, I'm still loving the Lord. I'm still worshiping the Lord. I'm still praising God. I'm begging him to take it away. I'm, you know, one, he, he did deliver me supernaturally from crack cocaine when I was 22 years old. 
my mom and dad prayed over me my dad on the phone he was on the phone my mom laid her hands on me the next day i was completely delivered set free after crawling cr crying on her lap i went to her house you know i walked over to her house because my apartment wasn't far from her and i laid on her lap and i said mom i cried like a baby and i said i will never quit smoking crack till the day i die ever I will never quit smoking crack because I can't and I will die smoking crack. And I was, I was, as, I was like as thin as a rail. I'd already lost custody of my daughter. She was in foster. My mom was fostering her at the time, you know, taking care of her because the courts took her from me. Um, and so anyway, the next day I was set free, not just me, but my boyfriend at the time was as well. And so that's a whole nother story. But anyway, so I've been set free through my whole walk of life. God has, has miracle after miracle, after deliverance, after miracle, healings in my body he'll you know just he's always provided every need that i've had i've never gone without even though i've had nothing zero zero i would i didn't have any I, I was negative in my account i didn't have a penny in my pocket but i had everything i needed okay so god always took care of me he always took care of me no matter what i was going through no, it didn't matter that i was addicted didn't matter that i was going through you know hard times and just completely addicted to a substance okay so fast forward um so when i was so when i would okay i went i went through rehab after i was after i got delivered from crack cocaine i wound up having an abortion shortly after that shortly after that i had an abortion and then after that i, I broke up with the boyfriend that i was with and i turned to alcohol because i was devastated by what i had done and so that's where the alcohol really kind of took over and just, you know, and then after that, then that was a short period of time because then I found meth because I found meth. I was under the influence of alcohol and then there was meth in front of me. And so then I was like, oh, okay, well, first I said, no way, I can't touch that. And then, you know, just a couple more beers and there it was, you know, I was doing it. And then I became addicted to that. That was about a year long anyway. I went to rehab and I was there for like 18 months. Um, I only had to do three months in order to get my daughter back 90 days but I stayed for a long time because I didn't want to mess things up you know but God used me during that time he used me in rehab to minister to people because I was born again I never lost my I never lost my salvation during all that I had given my life to Christ I don't know how many times I don't know how many times I, I would repent and say Lord forgive me and every time it was like you say the sinner's prayer I would say it and I was just like and I would grab a hold of it but I you know even though I didn't have to do that I didn't know when I was you know when I was younger I didn't know and so anyway um this has to do a lot with, with the spirit of religion as well you know my testimony and um God has told me just recently he said I have a special this isn't a special assignment for you Emily this is because I'm just like I don't know I don't know you know he's like you're on such a special assignment to to tell my religious people to let go of religion and you're an example i'm going to use you as an example okay so be it so i'm like whatever you say lord so anyway i'm kind of getting into my testimony so it might take a minute but i have to you know it's like i'm just going to do it i'm going to try and make it short and sweet <laughs> as fast as possible but anyway so when i was in rehab i got a job and i you know i, I got a job that I actually worked at for eight years at an oil company, you know, on, on the, um, in downtown Long Beach on the corner of Washington, or Washington in the corner of Ocean Boulevard and Long Beach Boulevard where all the high rises are. I worked in one of those high rises anyway. So I got water baptized, um, in 2000 In 2000, I got water baptized and I got baptized in the Holy spirit. Um, this was, you know, so many months into my sobriety, I don't know, maybe even a year into my sobriety, um, or, you know, off of drugs. And so, um, anyway, so I'm sitting there at work one day and I, at the time I called it a daydream, but it was actually a vision. I had my first vision. God had given me my first vision. I didn't know this until years later that it was that, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't even know until just a couple of years ago that he, when he reminded me. So anyway, I had a vision of a big airplane, 747 coming through my building, flying through my building. And I was sitting there at my desk at the, actually it wasn't my desk. It was the receptionist desk, but I was covering the receptionist that day, which I did every day for her lunch breaks and stuff like that. But anyway, so I had a vision and I jumped out the conference room window, did a tuck, 
roll, tuck, dive and dive, tuck and roll, whatever. And I rolled and then there was chaos in the streets and everybody was running. Anyway, 9-11 happened four days later. So my first vision was of 9-11, <clears throat> four days before it happened. This was just a few months after I had been water baptized and baptized in the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, just a few, probably like five months later. Um, maybe not even that. I don't know. It was just a few months after, a couple months after. Anyway, so my first vision, I was freaked out. I called it a daydream back then. I was like, oh, I had a daydream of this happening. Like, why? You know, and there was a World Trade Center over there. And there is a World Trade Center in Long Beach, um, downtown Long Beach. But anyway, I thought, well, maybe God is just maybe that's going to happen here. I didn't go to work that day because I was a mess. I was like, I saw this happening before it happened. I don't know why or what's going on. You know, I just, I tripped out. I was just like, this is crazy. So anyway, um, I was pregnant with my daughter at the time. Um, Allie, who's 20 now, but so this was 20 years ago. Um, well, a little over 20 years ago, but, but anyway, um, it was in, yeah, in 2022. So, so anyway, I, um, sorry, it's in 2001, not 2000, but, um, sorry, I'm getting off, off track here with dates. I'm such a date person, a time person. And a, so if it's not right, I'll try and fix it, but it doesn't really matter. It's besides the point, but <laughs> that's just who I am. So anyway, fast forward, I had, a, I had a baby. I, I eventually, um, you know, I eventually had another baby. I got married, had another baby when she was a year old. I mean, I got my tube site after that. When she was a year old, the Lord told me, and I, and during this time I had gone through a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. I'm going to leave all that out because, you know, I'm trying to make this quick. I'm just trying to get to the point of how I got here today and who God is and what he's, who he is and how much he loves us. He loves us so much. You guys, he loves his children and he, you know, people have him so mistaken and this religious crud that has been taught to us over the years is just sickening. It is sickening. And so it's, it's so sad because so many, so there's so many in the church that are still, you know, just they're brainwashed. You know, we've all been, you know, we're, they're brainwashed and it's just, it's sad. But anyway, so when Sarah was a year old, I had been spending tons of, you know, I was, I was at church four times a week, actually five times a week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, Wednesday nights. And, um, and also, uh, Monday nights, choir, choir practice I did. Um, and then Tuesday mornings, I would take an hour of vacation and I went to a women's Bible study every Tuesday. I took two hours, my lunch break, and then I took an hour vacation. I know my people thought I was crazy at work, but I was just all about Jesus, you know? And so, um, and they knew that I, I mean, I read my Bible at, at the desk for eight years straight, right in front of everybody at work. I read my Bible every day while I covered the receptionist desk for that hour while she went to lunch. I covered that, you know, and so everybody walked by there to go to lunch and walked back in every day and they saw me sitting there reading my Bible and they knew that I was all about Jesus. I had people, the UPS guy, the mailman, all of them would come in and talk to me and I'd talk, I'd witness to them and about Jesus and tell them about Jesus and Anyway, so here I am witnessing to people, but I'm still, you know, at night I'm going home and I'm having a glass of wine and I'm going through all this craziness at, you know, at home and, and, you know, just stuff with my husband at the time, my ex-husband, but I, I didn't, I tried not to take that to work with me. I tried to just show the love of Jesus everywhere I went, regardless of what I was going through. I just, and I, but I took it to the Lord and I, I would, I would cry. I would literally cry to him and say, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? Why is this? Why is that? Whatever. So I'd live my whole life like that pretty much. Okay. But I knew I would read his, I, I would stand on his word and I would say, I'm going to get through this, this, you know, all things work together for good for those who love you. And I love you and you know, I love you, Lord. So I know somehow, someday, some way, I don't know, you're going to work this out for you. You're, you're good. I don't know how, I don't know what you're going to do, but you're going to do it, you know? And I would just quote scripture. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I quoted that scripture. I don't know how many times. It's like my favorite scripture. You know, that I knew I was going to get through this. I was going to get through this addiction. I was going to get through this battle that I was going through with in, in my marriage. I was going to get through this, you know, this and that and the other. And just, you know, I was going to get through it all. And I just 
would stand on the word of God, even though I was fighting, you know, and I, and I've smoked cigarettes since I was tw for 33 years for tw since I was 12 years old, I've smoked cigarettes. I still smoke cigarettes today. I've been asking God to remove that from me for 33 years. And has he yet? No. Will he? Yes. Am I delivered? Am I set free? Yes, I am. I am delivered and I'm set free. It hasn't manifested yet, but I believe it and I stand on his word and I stand on what he says. And what he's told me is, I know the day and the hour, so quit trying because the more you try, this is what the devil's done with me when it comes to the smoking. Every time I try and I fail, then I'm set in depression and oppression for like days and days and days and days at a time. And I felt like such a failure and a loser. And he beats me up like to a bloody pulp. And I'm telling you what, God told me straight up. He said, you don't worry about it. I've already set you free. I know the day and I know the hour. Do I not know the end from the beginning? Haven't I brought you through this? Haven't I brought you through that? Haven't I delivered you from this? Haven't I delivered you from that? Haven't I, you, you know, so on and so forth. He's told me this, I don't know how many times. And he's like, you need to quit. I will use it for my glory. He's told me, I will use it for my glory. And I'm like, before this all started, before it, when he told me to, to get on here and to, and, and to, to, to prophesy to his people, I said, no way. I can't do this. I cannot do this, Lord. I said, I'm not worthy. I cannot. I'm like, Lord, I've only been sober for like three months. Like, he's all, and? So? You know? And I'm like, well, Lord, no way. I, pe people aren't going to listen to me. Like, I, I'm not. I, no. I smoke, Dad. I smoke. Yeah? And? And I'm like, well, Lord, um, you know, I, I'm not. I'm not, I can't, like, I just can't. And I wrestled and I wrestled and I wrestled. I'm just like, I can't, I'm supposed to be, you know, if I'm going to be witnessing and sharing your word and telling people they need to fight and they need this and they need to go to war and they need to battle and da, 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 then, you know, then I look like I'm not doing it. And he's like, it's not about you, Emily. It's not about you. It's about me. It's about me and who I am and about what I'm asking you to do for me. And I'm like, Okay, you know, I mean, I wrestled. Why? Um, because of what the world, you know, because of religion, because of, you know. But here's the thing. In my weakness, he's made strong. He's made strong. I've gone to deliverances. I've, I've, I've had just two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I went to Catherine Crick. I'm sure y'all know Catherine Crick, right? If you don't, she's an apostle that is anointed for deliverance, specifically the deliverance ministry. I went to Catherine Crick. I had everything, I renounced everything that I was up against, especially the cigarettes. I'm like, Lord, and I was, for, for months I had this plan. I've gone to uh, Liberty Turnip Speeds, you know, things, you know, and I've received, you know, she's laid her hands on me. She hasn't really delivered me, like, but I've received and I've been gone expectant. And I've said, okay, Lord, I'm going to receive, you know, deliverance today and, you know, from the smoking and, had, and it, it didn't work. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it didn't work. I, re I received it, but it hasn't manifested yet, is my point. It hasn't manifested yet. But anyway, two weeks ago, when I went to Catherine Crick, I said, okay, it's D-Day, delivery day, and it's Freedom Friday, because it was on a Friday. I'm like, it's Freedom Friday from cigarettes and from, you know, addiction that I've been dealing with for my whole life since I was 12 years old. 33 years. 33. So I know it's this year, and that's a whole nother dealio which i'm gonna get to in a second but the reason why i'm on fire you guys is because the enemy has tried to keep me from telling you guys my story forever because it's gonna help somebody this is for somebody because the enemy wants you to think that jesus has left you that jesus that god has left you in your sin and that he doesn't love you and that he's walked away from you and you're helpless and hopeless and that there's no freedom for you. That's a bunch of malarkey. And I'm telling you, God loves you and he will use you if you, <clears throat> if he has your heart and he doesn't look at the outside. He looks at the inside. He looks at your heart. When you get saved, you are giving your heart to Jesus. He will do the rest. He will do the rest. It's his responsibility. It's his responsibility. So when people say, oh, well, you got to turn from this. You got to turn from that. You got to repent. You got to repent. Yes, always have a repentant heart. Always, always, always have a repentant heart, no matter what. I get up every day and I go to bed every day repenting, saying, Lord, forgive me. 
forgive me for my sins forgive me for for the flesh that that has you know the power you know that that there's these fleshly things that are disgusting that you know you know what i'm saying and take him from me and i repent and i don't want and, and help me help me deliver me help me and so anyway but i repent and i say forgive me for 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 bad thoughts that i might have like in the morning when i wake up i'm like lord just forgive me in advance for any negative thoughts for any bad thoughts i might have or, or even think that i don't even know forgive me for the sins that i don't even know that i'm committing you know because he knows the end from the beginning he wants your heart if your heart is pure he'll do the rest and that's why i'm on here today to tell you guys this i'm telling you guys this so anyway so back let me go back to my you know to, to how i got here today so my tubes are tied my daughter's a year old i'm spending you know i had spent like i said i, I got up at three o'clock in the morning an hour and a half to two hours before my I even woke up my children and my husband to go to work because i wanted to spend time with god so not only am i i'm spending my quiet time with god i'm sacrificing a lot of my time and and just because i love jesus because i want to love jesus I want to spend time with him. I want to know everything about him. I want to I want to be full of I want to know. I want to learn. I want to be in his presence. I love him. I love being in his presence. I love who he I just love how he loves me. Because through it all, I knew he loved me because he would pour his spirit into me. I would feel him. I would feel his presence no matter what I was going through. I knew he loved me. I knew he loved me. Okay? And so I knew I was going to get through it. I knew I was gonna. I knew he was. I was gonna get through it. Whatever I was going through, and it just would go from one thing to another, and then I'd go through this battle, and then this battle, and I was faced. I, I mean, it was just nonstop, nonstop, you guys. So, so um, you know, the drugs ended in 2020. So just, just FYI. So that I mean, in 2020. Sorry, in 2000, when I was in rehab, that that's when the drugs. You know, I didn't. I haven't really. I haven't battled drugs since I went to rehab. It's just the alcohol that would, you know, come and go, come and go, come and go, come and go. And then it just hit me hard when I got my divorce in um, 2000 and, um, I don't know, 9, 2008, 2009, 2009 is when um, I really got, that's when alcohol really just, boom, took over. And I became an alcoholic, like an alcoholic. Like I woke up drinking and I went to sleep drinking you know and I got stupid like stupid drunk you know what I mean um but anyway so I um so I'm, I'm, I'm in time I'm, I'm spending time with the Lord every morning I hadn't heard the voice of the Lord yet I already had a vision I didn't know it was a vision the Lord just brought that up to me in 2020 just a couple years ago he reminded me of the vision it was a marker is what he used that for he used that as like a marker in time for me but i didn't i wasn't going to know until 2020. so basically my daughter's a year old so this is about 15 years ago he tells me you I, I hear the voice of the lord loud and clear one morning in the middle of the night three o'clock in the morning or you know 3 30 in the morning as i used to get up and he says you're going to become pregnant with twin boys and you're going to name them jacob and joseph that's what he said and I said, what? I said, what was that? Like, what was that? Like, where'd that come from? Like, it was in my spirit. Obviously, it wasn't like out, you know, but it was so loud. It was just like with a megaphone. Like, you're going to become pregnant with twin boys and you're going to name them Jacob and Joseph. And I'm like, huh? I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want any more babies, dad. No. No more babies for me. Tubes are tied. And he says, yes, you're going to become pregnant with twin boys and your name is Jacob Joseph. I was like, I journaled it. I wrote it down. I was like, okay. So it was the first time I'd heard the voice of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, like loud and clear, just loud and clear. It was just, you know, so I wrote it. I even went to work that day and I said, you're not going to believe this to people that, you know, my, my, like my best friends, I had like two best friends that I'm like, you're not going to believe this, but the Lord told me you know, this, and they were just like, what? I'm like, they weren't even like believers, you know what I mean? They, they believed in God, but they didn't, they weren't spirit filled. They didn't have, you know, and, and so 
anyway, they thought I was crazy. I thought it was crazy. I was just like, okay, whatever. So I just basically, so, so as the years go by every single time, like I was late on my cycle, whatever I'd run to the store and I would just, you know, get a pregnancy test, you know, cause I was just, so for 15 years, that's how I, I mean, I would say, no, I didn't really hear that. Uh, like I would t try and talk myself out of what I had heard. And then, and then the Holy Spirit would kind of just come and say, nope, you heard right. You know, you heard right or whatever. And, and so then anyway, so for 15 years, I went through this. Um, in 2020, um, I wasn't feeling good. I was going, you know, I just going through the change, having issues with the change, right? Because I'm getting, you know, whatever. Anyway, and so just hormonal issues, I should say, just hormonal issues. And, um... And I had been to the doctor and, and, and did all that with the doctor, but several times I actually had to have surgery one time because I had, um, some precancerous cells, or whatever. So I had to get those removed. And so I, I had been going through some stuff. And so I was obviously several times in my life, I was like, am I pregnant? I gotta be pregnant. Like, I just gotta be pregnant. Like, like I haven't had my period in like four months, you know, I must be pregnant. And so, um, anyway, no, that wasn't the case. So. In 2020, I'm not feeling very well, and I'm in prayer, and I'm 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 in prayer. And here's the thing, I had gotten sober. I I had gone through like five months sobriety with no alcohol, and then you know in the last five years. So in the last five years, until five years ago, I struggled basically every single day with alcohol. I was an alcoholic basically, and I just drank every day for several years since 2009 until five years ago. And then after five years ago, um, beginning five years ago, I would get a couple months sober. Like the first time it was like, like just a few weeks. I got like a few weeks. I was like, oh my gosh, I got a few weeks sober. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, like when I had one day, I was like, yes, I got a day sober. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this is happening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Like breakthrough, breakthrough. There's breakthrough and hallelujah, you know? And so, um, and literally that's what I was doing. I was just like, cause I'm still reading the Bible every day. I'm reading the Bible. Maybe sometimes I wasn't reading every morning. I wasn't, you know, not every day. That when I was really, really bad. I was just like, where's my drink? You know, but I'd still talk to God. I'd still beg him to take it from me. I'd still, you know, I'd try. I would try and I'd go further out with, with hours. I would go, you know, instead of drinking at eight o'clock, I wouldn't drink till noon or maybe I wouldn't make noon. Maybe I'd make it till nine o'clock. And then it was like till 10 o'clock. And then eventually I had three weeks sober. And then eventually I had, and then I'd relapse. And eventually I had four you know, five weeks sober and then I would do a short relapse and then eventually I had two months sober and then, you know, then I'd have three months sober and relapse for a couple of weeks. And then, you know, and these relapses were getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And my sobriety time was getting more and more and more. And I'm just like, yes, yes, yes. You know, every time I was just like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like there is hope for me. Like there's hope. Like I have, there's victory, you know, after I'm seeing, you know, and, and so I was like, so happy when I like when I had five months sober I was just like oh my gosh I got it this time like I'm never gonna drink again I'm never gonna drink again and then boom then I something stupid would happen and then I'd relapse and it would be like a two-week relapse instead of a three-week relapse you know then it'd be a week relapse and instead of a two-week relapse or three weeks so it's just and then I'd get another three months and then I so anyway I'm just saying that's kind of how it's been the last five years and they were just getting, you know, the, just more and more and more. So I've had more sobriety time more than I've drank, basically. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so this is this is my life, you guys. This is my testimony. And right when I looked at the clock, right now it said 3333. Three, three, three. <laughs> I'm telling you, God is good. Okay, he's speaking. And he's been dealing with threes with me all morning long because he just has. So anyway, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I know it in my tongue too before I did this because I was like, Lord, you have your way in me. So this is the Holy Spirit talking. This is Lord speaking through me. I said, you, this is, you have my tongue. You speak Lord through me. And I anointed my tongue with oil and I said, okay, Lord, have your way. So this is the Lord speaking through me. Um, cause I said, I can't do it. I can't do it. You know, I can't, I can't do it. So you do it. So anyway, um, so it's just kind of like confirmation that three, 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 right? I mean, I haven't looked at the clock and then I look at the clock and it says that. So anyway, so, um, in 2020, 
I'm sitting there or I'm on my knees all the time. My husband's at work. I'm married by, you know, I, I had gotten that divorce in 20, 2009 and now I'm remarried, you know, and, um, and I'm, I got married in 2019 to my current husband. So just a, a couple of years ago, but anyway, so I'm on my knees and I hear the Lord say, it's time. And I'm like, it's time. And I had been receiving a little bit of prophetic words, like just little, I've been hearing his voice. I was, I was starting to hear his voice again. Like I, I hadn't heard his voice like this ever, ever. Not like this. I'd never heard his voice like this. And all of a sudden I'm like hearing the Lord. I'm hearing these words and he's talking to me and I'm hearing him speak and I'm, and you know, and I'm hearing the Lord and I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. Like, oh my gosh, like the Lord is speaking to me. Like I'm hearing the voice of the Lord. Like I've been praying for this forever, for like ever. I've been wanting the, I've been one, I've been like, I had been crying out to God for years. I just want to hear your voice, God. I just want to hear your voice. Will you just speak to me? And my prayer, my whole life has been use me in a mighty way, God, use me in a mighty way. And I would decree over my life. I would say, I have faith that'll move mountains. I would just, and even in my addiction, even when I'm stuck in, you know, I would say, nope, I am delivered. I am set free. I am healed. I am loved. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I mean, I was speaking all this stuff over me as I'm walking through hell on earth. Okay. As I'm walking through this crazy addiction, this battle, I was decreeing and say, speaking the opposite over my life. I was, I was seeing the saying, saying the opposite and I was just speaking the word of God over myself. And you know, of course the enemy would come and attack and then I would go in this, you know, I mean, of course that's going to come. That just came the last couple days, you know, as God is using me right now, you know, and so that's just always going to come. And so you just got to know when, to, you know, just like, nope. And I mean, I've been fighting the last couple days. Don't think I've just been sitting here moping because I haven't been, but I'm just saying like, I've been a little bit under, the, you know, under the weather. Um, but of course I would get up and fight back. You know what I mean? I, I was fighting. I just wasn't fighting, fighting. And me being on here is fighting. That's what God was meaning when he says, you got to fight because he's called me to do this. He's called me to do this at, in this season. This is what he's called me to do. And, um, and that's what he means by get up and fight, get on there and talk to my kids, talk to my people, because this is what you're called to do in this hour. And so, so anyway, I hear the voice of the Lord. He says, it's time. And I'm like, it's time, time for what? He's like, you're pregnant. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm like, what? And I was like, am I? I, li I literally, it was just like, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. Like, I got to go to the store. So, because I heard him. I heard the voice. And I and I had already been receiving a couple, you know, like these short prophetic words. Um, you know, and so I was journaling what he was speaking. And I was, you know, I was just like blown away. I'm like, I cannot believe I'm hearing the voice of God, you know. And then he would give me scriptures and it would line up with exactly what he said. Kind of like what, you know, same thing today, what he's doing today. But they were just really short and just different. Like it, he's brought me to another level now um, from back then. And so you got to start out, you know, and I'm still, I'm, I'm still just like, you know, I'm still literally, you know, the, like a couple, several months ago, a few months ago, he says, don't despise, don't despise. I'm on my face and he's, and I'm, and I'm, anyway, he's, he, he said loud and clear, don't despise the small, the little beginnings or the small beginnings or whatever. He, he said that to me and I was just like, I don't even want to be doing this. This is not what I chose for my life. You know, Lord, I, I, I'm not despising any small beginnings, but I am, but I am beginning. That's the thing. I'm beginning to be used by God in a mighty way. And that's was, that was my prayer forever. That was my prayer forever. So anyway, he tells me I'm pregnant. I'm like, go to the pharmacy. Nope. Then after, you know, after several months or whatever, he tells me, um, not several months, like, you know, a couple months, basically he's telling me I'm pregnant and I'm getting these negative tests. And I'm just like, okay. He's like, I want you to tell Jeff, who was my husband. I want you to tell him that you're pregnant and that you're pregnant with twins and you're supposed to name him Jacob and Joseph. It's time. This is you're pregnant with Jacob and Joseph, you know? And, um, he had, um, and I said, no, I was, just, I, I argued. I said, no way. I'm not doing it. No way. I'm not telling him that he's going to think I'm psycho. He's going to leave me. <laughs> I'm like, 
he's already made clear he doesn't want any kids. You know, we've, we've had this conversation, Lord, you know, like we're not having any more babies, you know, so he's going to be, you know, he's going to be upset and, and, and whatever. And I said, and, and so it's going to be hard enough just to, you know, when I tell him after I have proof, but I can't just tell him, you know, it'll be different when I have a positive test, you know, and he's like, nope, I want you to tell him. And I'm still thinking I'm pregnant. I really do. I'm thinking I'm pregnant. I'm getting nauseated, which I never got nauseated with my kids, with my girls. And so I figured, well, you know, they're boys. So that's why I'm nauseated. And I was having just every symptom you can think of with pregnancy. So the Lord's letting me feel all these pregnancy symptoms, right? And, um, like physical pregnancy symptoms. And so, um, and I was just lethargic. I was so tired. And that's, you know, and I'm like, oh my gosh, well, I have twins inside me. I'm, of course, I'm going to be tired. They, you know, so long story short, I finally told my husband, of course he did think I was crazy. He's like, well, okay, well, you, don't you have to go to the doctor? I'm like, yeah, I have to go to the doctor. So then he asked me if I had taken tests. I said, yeah, I've taken tests, but they keep coming back negative. But I know that that's happened to women before. And so long story short, he tells me, God tells me, I have to tell the same thing to my doctor that I'm pregnant, that the Lord told me I was pregnant with twins, with twin boys. And he already gave me their names and everything. And he told me this 15 years ago, or actually it wasn't 15 then, it's 15 now. But he told me this, you know, 13 years ago or whatever, many years ago, he told me this. And so now it's time. And he told me this so many years ago that this was going to happen and da, da, da. So the Lord's telling me to tell this to my doctor. And I'm like, no way. I'm not doing it. There's no way. There's no way, no way, no how. And before all this, before I even told my husband, so this went on for like three months, me just wrestling with God saying, nope. And I'm thinking I'm crazy. Excuse me, you guys. Um, I'm thinking I'm crazy. I'm thinking literally I'm crazy. So anyway, um, but I knew, like, I, I asked God, I said, well, give me a sign. Well, then there was two baby bunnies in my backyard right after I asked him to give me a sign. And then, I, I, well, I need more than that. Give me another sign. Well, then there was two baby, two, two deer in my backyard, like, you know. And then, so I'm asking for physical proof. And then, of course, I'm watching TBN. And um, this, you know, during COVID, I'm watching TBN. And I'm watching Daystar. And, I'm watching, and every single pastor that was on these channels were talking about pregnancy. And I'm just, like, going, this is just bizarre. And then I, and then I would... And then like every commercial had a pregnant woman and there was just, everything was pregnant, pregnancy, pregnancy, pregnancy. You know, the shows that are watching, there was a pregnant woman and it, you know, it just, it was all right there. So then I told the Lord, I go, I need something more than this. Like before I went to go to the doctor, I was like, I need something more than this. Lord, you have to give me a sure sign, a sure sign. And then all of a sudden Joseph Welch pops up on the screen, a narrator for a show that my husband was watching. And I'm like, Okay. All right. And of course, when I'm saying, give me a sign, I'm not saying it out loud so the enemy can hear me. You know, these are like, I'm smarter than that. Like I know, I know. And so I, I, I say that under my breath. When I, when I have a question to ask God and I don't want the enemy to hear, I do not speak it. So if I want a sure, definite answer from God and I know it's, you know, then I do not let the enemy know what I'm up, what, what I'm up to. I keep that secret that is between me and God. So, so I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to say, oh, maybe, maybe that was that, maybe that was the enemy. Maybe that was the devil, you know, because he will, he's, that's how he works. He's tricky. So anyway, so, you know, so then I asked him, I said, okay, what about Jacob? So there's Joseph Welch. And then what about Jacob? Well, my husband turns the channel and then there's a nursery. He's watching like a do it yourself, you know, one of those home improvement shows, whatever. And then there's a nursery, big blue, Jacob on the nursery wall, like a, like a sign, just like, you know, a, of, of a baby's knee, a baby's be bedroom room said Jacob. So it was Jacob's room. <laughs> so anyway, I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm sold. You got me. All right. Okay, Lord, I'll do whatever you say. I'll do whatever you say. So I go to the doctor, tell him what he told me to tell him. I had a blood test negative. I go, okay, Lord's like, you need an ultrasound. So I get an ultrasound. I'm expecting, I, I, I'm expecting that I'm expecting. Literally, I think I'm pregnant. I think I'm pregnant because I'm feeling pregnant. The Lord is telling me I'm pregnant. He told me how many years ago I was like, and I, I'm like, Lord, I've, I've stood in faith. Like you've told me this and you know, you, I don't even, and this time in my life, I'm surely not wanting any babies. And I'm just like, well, you gotta, you gotta have to work this out, Lord, because you know, Jeff doesn't want any babies. 
our kids are grown. I mean, Sarah's not, but, you know, he has adult children and grandchildren, and I have adult children and grandchildren, you know, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, and, you know, and so, you know, so, um, anyway, I go get the ultrasound. I told, I even told, she's like, twins, huh? Like, you think you're having twins? I go, yeah, that's, yeah. And so, there's no babies. No babies. I immediately thought I was crazy. I went cuckoo crazy. I literally was just like, I am psycho. I'm psycho. I am just, so I was so angry at God. It's the first time I have been so angry at God. I was mad. I was hurt. I was just devastated. Because he humiliated me. I was like, you humiliated me. My husband thinks I'm psycho crazy. I mean, because my husband's not even on the same page with me anyway. You know, so it just made me look like I was really psycho crazy, you know, about Jesus. And then I'm just Lulu, like completely Lulu. <laughs> I have lost my love and cotton picking mind, whatever. And so anyway, so um, I had had like five months sober at that time six months sober at that time no five it was five months I had five months sober then you know so this was like my longest time maybe five and a half months it was just I've had a long time of sobriety and um, without it without a drink basically and I was like done I was done so I went straight to this liquor store I went into my closet I had a big walk-in closet I went to my closet and I I yelled at God. I screamed at him. I yelled at him. I said, how could you do this to me? How could you humiliate me? How could you, you devastate, you, you, you humiliated me. Like, why would you do this to me? How come, you know, and I was just, I yelled at him. I think I even cussed at him. I'm serious. Like, I think I even, I, I, I know I did actually. I cussed at God. I cussed him out. I was mad. I was just like devastated because I knew I was hearing his voice. I knew that I, you know, he was showing me all these sure signs and there was no way around it. There was just like, there was no way around it. So anyway, so I went on my two week bender of drinking and being mad at God. And then I, you know, got sober and came to and just whatever. And then, um, I, you know, I, sh I shared with my sister, I shared, you know, my sister's a seer and she's been, um, you know, and she's a dreamer as well but but anyway um then i then come to find out i was pregnant the whole time i was pregnant but it was a spiritual pregnancy it was a spiritual birth and he was he was um and he so basically it was prophecy jacob and jo joseph why he wanted me to name them those names i don't specifically I have my guesses, but it's not like God has specifically said this is, well, actually with Joseph, it's kind of like you've been through the ringer. You've gone for, you know, it's like you have gone, you, I have allowed you to go through this. He's told me over the last couple of years, um, basically, um, you know, that I'm kind of like a Job. I've lost everything, even everything I owned, because when I lost my apartment in California, when I had, and I lost, and, and I had to leave my kids with their dads because they became homeless. Um, you know, and so they had to go to their dads, my little ones. My older one was 18. She just had moved out anyway. But, you know, she was so the little ones went to, to live with their dads and I had to walk away. I had to move to Washington to live with my my mom because I was homeless, basically. And I couldn't get it. I couldn't get I didn't have a job. And so I couldn't get um, an apartment without a job. Um, and so anyway. Um, so yeah, so basically I, I had the, the Lord said I have allowed, you know, first and foremost, we have to understand that God does not allow. He only, and the enemy can't attack without God allowing it, period, period. God allows certain things. He allows us our, the word of God says, this is the word of God. Our, our steps are, um, our steps are ordained or whatever. What's not the word, um, you guys know the scripture. I'm just having a brain fart. I know. Ordered. Thank you. Our steps are ordered by the Lord. And if you love the Lord, which I have my whole life, I've loved Jesus my whole life, my steps were ordered. So he's allowed me to go through all of that. 
everything that I've gone through for this season right now that we're in where we're fighting religion we're st you know it's like people you we need to know who we are in Christ Jesus period the reason why I went through all of that when it came to the pregnancy and telling me that I was pregnant and then I had to go tell the doctors I had to be tested God had to test me to see if I was willing and if I was going to do it and be obedient to what he had asked me to do for what he has asked me to say. He had to trust me. He had to know that I was going to do what he asked me to do, even if it made me look like I was off my rocker and psycho crazy. Even if I was psycho crazy and my whole world thought I was crazy. He had to make sure that I was going to do what he said, what he spoke, that I would speak his words. Even if I sounded crazy to the world. And so just like Abraham, he had to test Abraham. He t or he, he tested Abraham with Isaac. And so that's what the Lord told me. Just like Abraham, I tested a Abraham. That's how I tested you. I had to see if you were going to do what, what I asked you to do. And you did. And you passed the test. You passed that test. And so that is how I got here into the prophetic calling that I've got. That, that you know, I, I saw my first vision of 9-11. Four days before it happened, he just revealed that again to me in 2020 when all this started, you know, when, when he was birthing this prophetic gift into me and and this prophetic calling, I should say, this prophetic calling that he's that he's called me to. He chose this for me and I've told him, I go, Lord, I don't want to do this. I do not want to do this. This is not my this is not what I chose for me. I had no idea that even back in, in when he told me dad was pregnant. 15 years ago, that was another time he, he was seeing if I would, if, if my faith, you know, I'm now I have a revelation and he's, you know, he was testing my faith for 15 years. He tested my faith to see if I would, you know how many pregnancy tests I bought over the last 15 years? A lot. Because I was like, Lord, I know I heard what you said. I heard your voice and you said I was going to be pregnant. And so I know my tubes are tied, but you said, and I know I'd. I know your word and I have faith and I believe what you say and you said little did I know that it was going to be this I had no idea that I was going to become that I was going to be prophesying in the end times like for crying out loud I had no idea that and I would do all of that stuff in my life you know and still going through it today to, to, to share with his children who God is and how much he loves us. And no matter what we've gone through. No matter what our life looks like on the outside. If you love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. He will see you through. He will see you through and he will love you through it. And he will use you. He will use you no matter where you're at. I have 10 months sober. A little over, almost 11 months sober. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that is something to say. I almost have a year sober, you guys. And I haven't had that in like since 2009 I had a year and a half sober you know after I you know anyway I, yeah since 2009 I have not had a year sober and so this is something to celebrate and when he when he when he asked me back in March to make my first video and I argued and I think that that's why I think you know he's told me he's like he has told me specifically he's like quit stop wrestling me stop wrestling with me He's told me that. Stop wrestling with me because I literally, I was like, I can't do this. I'd cry. I'm like, Lord, I can't get in front of these people. I am not worthy. I, look at me. I'm a mess. I am a mess, Lord. You see what who, who I am? And he's all, that's right. I do see who you are. And you're awesome, Emily. You're awesome. And you love me. You love me and you'll do anything for me because you love me. And that's what I want. That's who I want to use. I want to use anybody who loves me and who wants to do my work and my will and, 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 and show who I am because I love my people. I love everybody. I gave my son, my son died for your sins, for every sin that you've committed. My son gave his life and he was beaten and bruised and spit on. He died a sinner's death for your sins. We can't forget the blood of Jesus and what it means. 
the blood of Jesus, it covers all. It covers all sin. Every single sin. Even if you're living in sin today, you give it to Jesus. You tell him. You say, I don't want it. I don't want it. I laid at your feet. Help me. Help me. And if it takes a year, if it takes two years, you keep giving it to him. And you keep saying, forgive me. And I love you. And I know you're going to take this from me. Because only you can. Because I can't do it. Even though we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Yeah, we can walk through it. He gives us the strength to walk through it. He gives us the strength to keep going. He gives us the strength to keep trusting him and knowing to stand on his word and know that your victory, that you're going to have the victory over it. You will have the victory if you just keep standing and keep trusting and keep believing and keep decreeing and keep, keep declaring. Like This is in our own personal lives, but this is for our nation. This is for our earth. This is for our world. This is for our government. This is for everything. It's like, yeah, this is for my personal life, but we have to stand on our... You know, when it comes to what's going on in, in, in the world, it's the same exact thing. But we're facing this. We're going through this, this in our own personal lives, you guys. We have to trust God, just like we're trusting him with, with the situation that's going on in our, in, in our world. Bring that into your own life and trust that he's going to work it out for your good because he will. He has me. And he's still working on me. I'm still a mess. I'm still a mess. When I went to Catherine Crick two weeks ago, you guys, I'm telling you what, I told my sister, I said, okay, I'm going to the bathroom. I have to go potty and I'm going outside. This was three hours in. I had renounced. I was expecting. I was saying, Lord, I'm, I'm going. He knew that I was like, I was so excited about the day. I was just like, oh my gosh, like I am so excited, you know? And um, I drove a couple hours to get there, just like I do, you know. Um, anyway, and so, so um, when I went to Captain Crick, he, I, I, I told my sister that, and then I went outside, and I lit up my cigarette, and it was just out in the, you know, the, the church was out in like this orchard, and in, in the out in the country, and and um, and I was familiar with this because I had lived out in that area for a couple of years. But, um, and I just looked up and I, I, it was just so beautiful. The stars were up there. And I, and I, and I said, Lord, I said, why, why am I out here smoking? Why haven't you taken it from me? I renounced it. I believed for it. I, I, you know, and so I said, it's okay. It's okay, Lord, because I know my time is coming. I know I said, I have the victory. I am, I am set free. I said, I received my freedom and I'm looking up at the sky, at, at the sky, at the, at the stars. And as I started walking, um, so, so basically I, I just said, why? I asked him why I said, I don't understand. Why am I not? Why is it that I am out here? Why is it that, that I'm not set free yet? You know, like why I don't want to smoke this cigarette, Lord. I hate it. I can't stand it. He knows I can't stand it. He knows I've been smoking for 33 years, you guys. I hate it. I can't stand it. But guess what? I don't look like I smoke. I don't look like it for 33 years. My sure, my heart sure doesn't show it because every time I go to the doctor, I have a real strong heart. My blood pressure is good. So God has preserved me. Thank you, Jesus. He covers us and he's covered me and I plead the blood of Jesus over my everything every single day. But anyways... So I'm out there as I'm starting to walk after I, after I had my little conversation with God, because I didn't hear him speak. I didn't hear nothing. I was asking. I, I just basically kind of just told him how I felt because he expects that we can go to God with anything, anything. He is my husband. He is my best friend. Jesus he is my best friend. I talked to him about every single part, every detail of my life, every detail, even the things that people wouldn't want to talk to God about or just like, oh, no, that's too much. No, it's not. He made you. He created you. He cre he knew the thought. He, he knows your thoughts. So why not talk to him about it? That's my relationship. I talk to him about every single detail. He helps me do my laundry. I take. He, he helps me do my grocery shopping. He helps me, you know, cook dinner. I remember back in the day when I first started cooking dinner for my husband, I'd be like, I hadn't cooked in a while. You know, I used to cook for my kids and stuff, but I hadn't cooked in a while. My husband was like the cook. 
and he he cooked awesome meals and i hadn't cooked for a long time and so um anyway i would pray i would literally like okay lord jesus you gotta help me with this because i don't know like help me with my seasoning like help me help me make sure i put the right amount of seasoning and this and that and, da, 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 and you know and my meal always turned out great you know and so i was just like i take him in the kitchen with me he still comes you know i mean i don't pray and ask him to help me with the preparation anymore because you know he's just but but i talk to him while i'm cooking i talk to him i talk to him all day long you know all day everywhere i go i thank him for helping me make my bed in the morning you know every single morning it's like i thank him for everything i have i mean not every single day do i thank him for everything i have when it comes to certain things like like i literally go to detail when i'm in the shower i'm like thank you for my soap lord thank you for my shampoo thank you that i have a razor i can shave my legs you know what i'm saying little things just the little things Thank you for the bottle of water I have. Thank you for my cube of butter in the fridge. You know, I mean, just, just little, those things, it means a lot to God. It means a lot to him. Be, to have that thankful, grateful heart. To not take anything for granted that he's given us. I thank him for breath, that he, he's the reason why I breathe. I thank him for another breath every single morning before I put my feet on the floor. I give him glory. I say, good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, angels. I say that every morning before I get out of bed. And I say, I put on your full armor, Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Put your armor on me as in Ephesians 6. And I also say, I, I, I cover myself. Well, first, I, you know, in the blood of Jesus, I cover myself in the blood, my heart, my mind, my soul, my physical body, my home. The glory girl, my husband, my children, my family, and the body of Christ. And then I rebuke the enemy and I cancel every assignment of every, you know, every assignment. And I put Psalm 91 over us. I cover us in Psalm 91 for me and the body of Christ and my family, my children, all of us. I do it before I even put my feet on the floor and I rebuke the devil. And then I get up and I go. And I thank him. For another day to glorify him because he's worthy of all the praise no matter what we face in that day no matter what he's going to receive the glory for it it's his day this is the day that the lord has made it we will rejoice and be glad in it no matter what we go through no matter how hard it is no matter what we're what we come up against but anyway really quick back to Catherine Crick one more time so i'm standing there i walk away i want to finish this um i'm almost done you guys i walk away and um, as I'm walking back to the church building, because I went far into the, you know, I didn't want everybody to see me smoking. I'm ashamed of it. I hate it, you know? So anyway, I couldn't walk. I could hardly walk. I was like drunk. Like I literally was stumbling like a drunkard. And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, okay, Lord. All right. Okay. I'm like, okay. So I was like, he was showing me his presence. Like he was listening to what I was telling him, you know? He, he wasn't speaking. He was letting me feel him. And so I stopped right there as I, you know, was stumbling back. I just stopped. I was like, okay, Lord. I was like, okay. So I raise my hands to the sky and I look up and all I see is bright, beautiful stars. And I just started praising him right there. And I just was praising him with my hands in the sky. And I was just like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just praising him and, you know, just praising him. And all of a sudden, I just felt his, just my whole body got full of electricity. My hands heated up like fire. I felt the fire of God on my hands. It went through, started in my hands and it went all the way through my body. It went all, the, I, my whole body, just, I felt the, 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 just like electricity. Like it was just, and, and God was just saying, I'm here. You've got me. Like you've got my attention. I'm listening. I'm right here and I'm letting you feel me. And you just know, you know, that I, that, that I'm, that I still got you. Like, don't, don't get all weird on me now, Emily. Don't get all weird on me now. So he was showing me his power. Basically, he was showing me his power. And, and I thought for sure, okay, well, I'm going to just, that's it. Like, I'm delivered. I'm set free. That was the last cigarette I smoked. No, that wasn't it. After, after it was over, it was over shortly after. And then we went to go get food. It was like 11 o'clock at night or whatever. And we went and stopped and got food before we had to drive an hour or two back home. And, and you know, as soon as we got to the fast food, I'm like, pull over. You know, I'm going to smoke. And so, no, he didn't set me free from it yet. 
Like, I mean, I, it, I'm set free and I'm claiming that and I'm speaking that and I'm de decreeing and declaring it. But like I'm saying, I'm still, I still, it hasn't manifested yet. And yesterday he told me when I, you know, he said, you need to release what you release it, release it and watch you be set free. So today I'm releasing it to all of you. I ask for prayer that you stand in agreement with me in this battle that I that I have, you know, struggled with for 33 years. But, um, and a lot of religious people aren't going to like this and that's okay. <laughs> you know, that's why I'm on here. And that's why God has used me. He said, you're on a special assignment to break the religion off my people because I'll use who I want, when I want, how I want. Period. Period, period, period. And it's nobody's business who I use and how I use them. Because I'm God and I do what I want. And he had, to, he had to tell me that for myself. Because I was too religious. He had to break that spirit of religion off of me first. Before I could come on before you guys and do this. I've still struggled. I've, I've wrestled. Anyway, and I think that's why he said Jacob and Joseph. Because Jacob's name means wrestler. He's a, uh, means wrestle. Or whatever. And he knew that I was going to wrestle with him over this whole thing, over getting on before you guys. And, 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 you know, because of my past, because of who I, you know, he asked me to get on here th three months into my sobriety. Three months over, I'm like, no way. Like, no, I'm not. No, you know. And so um, how we got into the glory girl, I want to share that really quick. Um, so. After God told me that I was pregnant and then I was all humiliated and stuff, um, um, I was like, I got to get a job. I got to go to work because I got to, I just got to, you know, I mean, of course I, I, after that two weeks of the bender that I had my major breakdown, you know, I, of course I repented. I asked God to forgive me. I found out that it was a spiritual pregnancy and that he was birthing something into me, you know. And he, you know, so this, you know, pr prophetic calling and, um, and the, the twin thing, the, the, the twin part, I, I still don't know. I know that one of them is the prophetic is, is the prophetic calling, but the, you know, I don't know what the other one is exactly. I don't know. I, maybe it's faith, you know, just a, a faith to, to, to trust him. Maybe it's, I, I, I don't know. I haven't really gotten like a clear revelation on, on the, you know, because there's two twins there's two so i don't i don't know exactly i don't know i know one day he'll reveal it it'll it'll come he'll, he'll he will but i just don't have i can't specifically say i know one is a, pro, a prophetic you know um obviously and then a prophetic calling and then the other i'm not sure so i don't know if anybody out there knows let me know please <laughs> Pray about it. Ask God to give you some revelation, you know, and um, let me know. Put it in the in the comment section. But um, anyway, so how we got into the glory girl is um, so basically I said, Lord, OK, I'm going to get a job. You know, I got to go to work. I got to share me with the world because I'm not doing any good in this house by myself. And we had a house like my husband owned his own home when we got married. And so it was a big house. It was a five bedroom house. You know, and, um, and, um, five bedroom house and, and, and an office and a bonus room. It was a big house. That's a very big house. So I went from basically sleeping on my mom's couch, you know, again, I mean, I, I moved to Orcas Island for, for five years and I was, you know, in a little teeny cabin or whatever, um, in between, you know, from my move from California to Washington. And so, um, anyway, that's how I met my husband. I, I was with his best friend and so his best friend um my husband and I did not like each other one bit not at all and then after I left his best friend um him and I became best friends even though it was like we couldn't stand each other for five years we couldn't stand each other I didn't like him he didn't like me I, I didn't I didn't like him because he didn't like me and I didn't do anything wrong to him and I was just like fine whatever I don't like you either then <laughs> just you know I know, not very Christ-like, but anyway, um, I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. <laughs> I never will be perfect. 
but um and i'm on the road i'm just i just keep going i'm just you know i'm not gonna stop i'm not god has called me to do what i'm gonna do what, what he's called me to do when when to do it and and i'm done arguing with god and so i'm just doing what god has asked me to do and that's the bottom line and i and so you know i'm not gonna argue with him anymore i i'm not gonna wrestle with him because i don't because i can't i can't do that I have to be obedient to what God has called me to do. And, and that's where I find my peace, my joy, my strength and everything. It's, it's, it's when I'm walking in obedience, that's where I find all of my strength, all of my peace and my joy and everything. It's just, you, that's just the way that it is. And so that's how God wired us up. When you're walking with the Lord and you're walking in obedience with him, you, you're going to find your peace and your strength and your hope and everything that you, you know, anyway, so, um, so anyway, I get a job. Um, I waited for, you know, I've been looking, looking, looking. And then all of a sudden I saw this, there was a Chick-fil-A going up in Bonnie Lake where, you know, right where we lived. And I was like, Chick-fil-A. And I had told the Lord, I literally had told the Lord, he's so good. See, this is how faithful he is. God is so, he has been like right by my side my whole life, blessing me through, through it all. I mean, he, I never went without anything, never went without anything. He would, he would throw little extra blessings, you know, extra blessings, you know, um, at one point I just, I got to share a couple of these little things because they're important. Um, just to show the love of God and how he cares about you. And he does special things for you that make you happy. That would put a smile on your face. That would put a smile on your face. He wants to see you smile. He wants to see you happy. You know, even when you're, you know, even when, if you're going through something, you know, and, and, and you're not, <laughs> 111 and look at the clock again 111 okay lord yes you got my he's you see see just like that i'm talking about it now it says 11111 <laughs> anyways um god thank you lord jesus you're so good um but i'm trying to find a picture for you guys because so back back um when i was going through all of this um through hard times or whatever God knows who, you know, he knows who I am. He, he created me. He created me the way I am, right? Well, Natalie Grant is my favorite. She's been my favorite artist for years, for years and years and years. Like Natalie Grant has been my favorite Christian artist. Sandra Bullock was my favorite. Um, back years ago, she was my favorite actress. So Sandra Bullock and Natalie Grant were my girls, right? <laughs> So all of a sudden, you know, years down the road, you know, after, you know, and, and, and I was watching all of her movies and I just, you know, I just loved her. And, and we, I talked to her about it with my friends. I'm like, oh my gosh, I love Sandra Bullock. She's like my favorite actress. Da, 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 da. And then, then all of a sudden, you know, years down the road, um, all of a sudden my daughter becomes best friends with Jesse James's daughter when he was married to Sandra Bullock. Not a coincidence. I'm just saying. So now here I am, you know. I have Sandra Bullock calling me on the phone. Hi, Emily, it's Sandy. I have Kayla, you know, um, is it okay if she goes to Jesse's, you know, um, monster truck show with us tonight? I'm like, of course. <laughs> yeah. You know, so anyway, this was back, you know, when I was still, you know, I mean, I was drinking, I was, you know, whatever, but God, it was just, he, you know, my heart is always, like I said, I never ran from God. I, I didn't run away. I cried to him so many times asking him why, why am I going through this? Help me. I don't want to live this way. I don't, you know, but I, I, I stayed close to him. I stayed close to him. There was times where of course the enemy would, I mean, and that's, that's a given. The enemy would, you know, attack and I would feel like, you know, I just feel like crap, feel like poop. And, you know, um, but I'd always find my, you know, just like, like a couple days and then I'd, I'd kind of be depressed or oppressed or whatever, just, and, and, and ashamed, you know, that con that, that, um, condemnation that I'd feel that I didn't want to talk to God for a couple days because I was just like, I felt icky and I felt dirty and I felt like I couldn't come to God, you know, but, but God, but God is who he is. And then I, you know, I'd always find my way, um, back to him and just, he, he would love on me. He would love on me. Just little teeny little things that he would just drop in my lap, you know, just showing me he's still there. He's still with me. He's, he's still loving on me, you know, cause I wasn't hearing his voice back then. But, um, and then here's me, Natalie Grant, 
and my sister. And so, you know, I got to meet both my my favorite actress and my favorite um my favorite Natalie Grant. <laughs> I got to serve her in the green room at church. She came and did a um a conference, a women's conference at my church and so that I had grown up in. Basically, I was there from 12 till till I left California. And so anyway, um so yeah, so God, those are little things that God does for you. You know what I mean? He did that for me because he knew it would, it would make me happy. You know, just those little things, you know, and I didn't even work in the green room, green room back then or in hospitality. That was my sister's thing, you know, but my sister knew how much I love Natalie. So she's like, Hey, come on, you know, come and serve in hospitality, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And so, and so I did, and I got to serve Natalie Grant and her, and her twin and her twins, <laughs> her twin baby girls when they were little. So this was years ago, but, um, so this just goes to show how long that I've been, you know, I mean, I've, I've been walking this road for a long time and God has always had me no matter what. Um, and, um, back to the glory girl. So I, I basically, I had told the Lord I needed a job and I told him I wanted to work for a Christian company or a company that would honor him. And I said, I don't want to just go work for just anybody. I want to, you know, and I want you to use me to bless people. I love people. And so use me to bless people. And so, um, anyway, I got a job at Chick-fil-A. It was a brand new build. They, they, they did just built it. I actually got hired before they were even done building it. And they hired me as a manager. And, um, and my boss's name was Kayla. And I don't even know how this happened, but I became like, they're part of their family. The owners, they were just, they took me under the wing before I even met them in person because my, it was during COVID. And so my, my, um, my interview was on Zoom. And so... And then when I went in to go pick up my uniform a couple months later, because it wasn't built yet, she was introducing me to her family, like her family, her husband and her, her, you know, um, her in-laws as they knew me. She, like she had been already talking about me to her family, you know, out of the 160 employees that she hired. Like that's favor, you guys, that's God's hand, you know, and I had complete favor and, and, um, the first day that I that I started, my back went out. The first morning, that after, you know, after, uh, during training, my back hurt. Of course, I was one of the oldest. I think I was the oldest other than, um, I was the oldest one, oldest employee there. Um, except for, but except for, um, you know, her in-laws. So one of my boss's parents, they worked there too. And, but, but anyway, God gave me that job and he gave me management position because I've always been a passive person. So it was all a setup for who I needed to be today. So it was like all those things. So God, I had to go through that whole thing with the doctors, with the him trusting me thing. And then he was building. So it was like a boot camp. My sister explained to me, God's boot camp is, is, um, it's short and, and, um, it's short and it's tough and short, which, what did she say? Um, boot camp is hard, short and hard, hard and short or something like that. Like it's, it's, it's hard, it's short, but it's, it's like a quick thing. And so basically he put me through boot camp when I was a, a Chick-fil-A manager. So anyway, I'm, I'm at work. My husband comes home from work one day. I'd only been there. I'd only worked there for three months. You guys, that's how, that's how fast it was. And, um, I had to learn how to be a boss and how to have authority and to be able to communicate with people and to, you know, cause I, like I said, I've always been passive and just not, not a, a very assertive person and not, you know, and, um, so God was like, we got to get that out of her. Like, no, if I'm going to use her how I want to use her, then that has to go. So let's put her in this management position with these little snotty nosed kids <laughs> who think they know it all and let her get, let her get some experience and authority and how to be a boss. And so that's exactly what happened. And I had, and it was very hard for me because I didn't like, I mean, I had to pray. I went on a prayer drive every single day. I went on a prayer drive for lunch every day to regroup and to, and everybody knew it. They were like, I would walk out. And of course I smoked too, but I would pray on my smoke. I, I would smoke. I'm just being honest. I'd smoke and pray. And I would turn on my worship music during that half an hour. And I would just fill myself up and I would praise the Lord. And I would thank him for the opportunity, what he's given me to do. And I was thanking him for, for giving me the strength and the courage and the wisdom and everything that to, 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 to love on these kids 
but do it with authority and teach them because a lot of it was their first job. I had 15 year olds. I had a 14 year old, you know, that I'm trying to, that I'm their boss. You know what I mean? And then of course I had some 19 and 20 year olds and 23 year olds that, you know, they were a little snotty and I had to, I had to be a boss and, and it was hard for me. It was so hard. I mean, there was a couple times I would cry because I was like, Lord, how do I be nice with authority at the same time with these kids? You know, it's like, I'm trying to teach these kids, you know, and I had to have, I mean, even there was man, there was a manager that was, cause I was in the back of the house. I was hired for the front of the house, but they, they had to put me in the back because they didn't, they didn't have anybody to run the show back there that was doing it right. And so they put me back there and and so, but then I had to, I opened the store. So the morning team, there was the front of house manager. I had to hold a, a, a meeting with everybody and just say, look, you guys, this is not happening. We cannot do this. We have to do it this way or it's not, you know, it's like they have entrusted us. Kayla and Blake have entrusted us with their, jo- this is their, their um, dream. This was Kayla's dream. She had, she had dreamt of having her own, her own store she since she was 16 she started working at chick-fil-a when she was 16 she was young she was like 25 or 20 28 or something when she when she became the owner but of her own franchise or whatever but still it's like i had to tell them no we have to we have to step up the plate here you guys this is not okay you know and so i had to be the boss of even the other boss like i had to you know it's just like but i learned so much you guys I learned so much and God threw me in there, threw me in and pulled me out. And when he pulled me out, I was ready to go. And he said, okay, Emily, or my husband came home from work one day and said, okay, he's all, honey, quit your job. We're, we're selling the house. I said, what? He's all, I go, I just, it was like, okay. So I just got my home. I had a nice big house. You guys, it was a big house. It was nice. It was beautiful. It was only 10 years old. It was new. It was, I'm like, okay, Lord. So now you give me a home and now you're going to take it away from me. I'm like, what in the world? So that was challenging. I'm like, you just gave me a job and I'm just getting used to it. And I'm just finally getting, I'm just learning how to be authoritative. And I'm learning how to stand up for myself, which I've never done before in my life. And I'm learning how to, and, I, and I'm and I'm blessing these people. And, and I have total favor from every single person in that place. I mean, minus a couple that didn't like me very much because they had to be disciplined. I'd have to write them up which was hard for me to do, but I had to write them up because they weren't showing up for work. And when they did, they'd show up a half an hour later every day. Well, I, as a boss, I had to do my job. You know, they hired me to be responsible to do my job. So I had to step into that role and be the boss. And it wasn't easy for me, but I had to do it. And so I did it. And so that is kind of how, what God has brought me into today. But anyway, I didn't know all this. I had no clue, not a clue. So in 2020, so um, in May of 2021, my husband comes home and he says, quit your job. It was like May 20, May May 28th, I think. And he says, quit your job and we're selling the house. And I was just like, this can't be you, God. No way. I'm like, no way. I said, I'm not, no. I was like, no way. So then I had to take it to the Lord in prayer. I had to go to him. I had to specifically, I mean, I was like, God, you need to tell me, is this you? Is this your will? Because I really don't want to have a big old argument with my husband about this. Like, and I've, I, I told you know, cause my husband's not on the same page. He doesn't go to God and, and, and pray and say, Lord, you know, lead my way. No. So I put him in my, I put my husband in God's hands and I say, Lord, you lead him and I'll follow. And I'm going to trust you to, even though he's not going to you in prayer, I'm going to you in prayer. So you drop in him what you want for our lives. And I trust him. And I, that's my prayer. And I, my faith is that my, if I go to God, he's going to, you say you have not because you ask not. You pray and you ask me anything. If it's according to my will and it'll be done, it'll be given. And that's how I pray. That's how I believe. That's what, you know. And so that is what I, you know, so I, so I was like, okay, Lord you know my prayers since I've married this man, you know, I know he's not, he's not, you know, I probably shouldn't have. And I married him when I was drunk. (laughs) Just saying we were both drunk when we said I do, even though we had a beautiful backyard wedding, you know, and, and I planned it and it was a beautiful, 
you know, we had a big backyard and I, his family came and I rented the big old ginormous tent and we had heaters in there and we had a dance floor and we had, I mean, we did it. We did it. We, you know, had the tables and the chairs and the food and, and everything on Thanksgiving. We got married on Thanksgiving in 2019 and I had it all decorated with, you know, um, it was all harvesty and just really, um, beautiful, but, but we were drunk. We actually got we were actually we drank a little bit too much we had family come in from out of state and stuff and whatever and and um not my family my family wasn't there my kids came but anyway um that's besides the point so he says we're selling the house i say all right god is this you anyway the lord said it is me it is me this is my will and i'm like and and my daughter Allie, my 20 year old had just moved in and well she'd been there for you know about a year she had moved from, you know, after she graduated or when she turned 18, she wanted to come stay with mommy. I'm like, come on. So she had, you know, so anyway, and then, um, and so that was another thing I, I did that was not good. And, and that was, you know, it's part of my story, but I let her boyfriend come too. I made that drunk decision as well. And then after I got sober for a while, I was like, get out. <laughs> you guys can't live under my roof not married I did it my whole life and I had to live with the sin and now I'm married and I'm doing it right and I'm not going to take the burden by allowing you to do it and so I kicked them out and I I said you have so much time but you got to go you got to go because I can't allow it I can't allow this you know so then they moved out for a while and then they had a really hard time with their roommates and then they had really nowhere to go so then I let them come back but she got pregnant right away that's the thing she got pregnant right away so anyway she still moved out when she was pregnant you know she they moved out and then um then they moved back in to have the when they had the baby they moved back in shortly before because they had a bad falling out with their roommates they were doing drugs and stuff you know the roommates were and so i was just like no you come back here you come back here and so they did and they came back but when he came you know so the baby was just born and he comes home and says we gotta sell the house so anyway i um so I took it to the Lord. He said, yes, it's me. I was just like, oh my gosh. So I quit my job and, um, we started looking for RVs and, and whatever we, we, um, we found the glory girl, um, in Texas, we had gone through and walked through so many different, um, RVs and trailers and, um, fifth wheels and stuff. And I was just like, no, we got to have, I want something safe. If we're going to be on the road or whatever, I want something safe. And so, he basically quit his job as well. We um, we got the house ready to sell. Three months later, the house was sold. So that's how fast it happened. It was like, and um, we put the house, basically, I quit my job on May 31st. June 24th, it went on the market on my birthday. And um, it closed on July 31st, and we were on an airplane July 31st. And, um, or July 30th, actually, July 30th. And so then... We had had, we had six months sober, you know, six months sober. And then my husband, we almost got, I mean, we almost got a divorce a couple times during that whole process in that very short period of time. Seriously. Cause it was awful. It was, it was, it was a hop. I don't know if you guys have sold the house, but if you have in that short of a time, it's pretty quite crazy. I mean, it, it was very stressful. So anyway, I just continue to trust the Lord. I was just like, okay, whatever. But anyway, my husband, as soon as we got to the airport, my husband was like, I want to drink. And I was like, no, I said, no, no, no. And, um, anyway, then he did, he went to the bar and then of course, you know, I wound up following. And so, um, we did a little bit of a relapse after six months. And so we get to Texas and we buy the glory girl and we're in, you know, and we, we basically were stuck there for a couple you know, for a couple, um, and I, I wanted this one. I wanted this one, this bus, because of the way it looked inside and it was the safest one on the road. They are built out of steel. It's not your normal production coach. This is a, this is a, um, you know, and here's the thing. Here's, here's, this is important. God told me, go with the flow. He kept telling me, go with the flow. That was, that, those were his words. Go with the flow. And he says, you are going to be in four a big surprise. He said, you are going to just be in awe of what I give you. And this was before I even saw the girl. This was before this was right when he told me 
and I was struggling with selling the house and I was struggling and I was just like, Lord, how could this be you? When you, you know, my daughter's here, Allie's here and the baby's here and this. And now I, you know, it's like, I'm leaving my daughter again. Like she just had a baby. Like I'm leaving my baby and like, you know, and he's like, trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me. And so anyway, long story short, we put the kids and they got their own apartment and we set them up. We bought them furniture. We bought the babies, you know, we bought, we bought it, you know, we set them up basically and, um, gave them all of our stuff basically like our pots and pans we everything they needed for everything they they were set up our bed everything so actually they took their well they took two beds <laughs> but anyway so um so we get to texas um oh anyway I, I found this one online or whatever we and i called we called and we talked to the guy about it and and um and i just prayed he's like if, if if you guys aren't here, so it was a couple weeks before we were, before the house was going to close. And I was just like, Lord, let it be there because I really want this one. And so anyway, it was there and we got stuck in Texas because there was a problem with it. And so we had a couple things that need, had to be fixed, that needed to be fixed before we could leave. Well, during that time, I didn't know we were supposed to be in Oklahoma where she was built in Oklahoma, in Miami, Oklahoma, she, that's where they build these things. And it's just one location. They only built in one spot. Like, it, like I said, it's not a production coach. They're luxury, um, they're luxury, um, um, custom built coaches. Like you, you build them yourself. Basically you pick the interiors and you pick, you know, how, where you want your fridge and where, you, where you want your slides and like everything, you know, obviously that's not what we did. Um, she's a 2006 Newell coach and when she was built in 2006, she was $1.6 million back in 2006. So yes, I'm living in a million dollar bus. Um, that was a long time ago, like almost $2 million bus. And God told me, you are going to love it. Just go with the flow and I'm going to, you're, you're going to be in awe of what I give you. And I'll tell you, I, and I, I still cannot believe that this is my home. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously this temporary home, but it's for a few years, we're going to be living in this as we have our new house built. And so, um, we're buying some land and that's the plan. Anyway, God's in control. We all know what's coming and what we, what we, we don't know what's coming. That's the thing. We don't know what, what God's going to do. We don't know. So the plan is when we sold the house, we were going to buy some land and then we were going to build, um, a small house. We don't want a big house anymore. So yeah. So I went from this big old house, you guys, to this small little space. So it was an adjustment and that was really hard in the beginning. It was really, really, it was hard to be that close to my husband and then he wasn't working and I wasn't working. And so we're just like this. And it was just like, like it was very difficult. Um, I actually, and God had, 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 had God had, it's like after, as soon as he went to work, as soon as he got a job, God's like, make a video. And I'm like, oh, I didn't finish telling you about Miami. So really quick, we go to Oklahoma and I had been following Liberty Turnip Speed with Spirit Move Ministry for quite a while. And I, like I was tithing, she was like who I gave my tithe to. She was who I gave my offering. I had been buying her t-shirts that she, that she was, you know, um, just starting to create or whatever. And so like the, the, um, I can feel the glory one was the first t-shirt that I, that I had bought. And at the bottom of it says, hashtag, I prophesy. And so I wore that shirt everywhere. And then I got, I'm going with the glory. And so, and then when she starts saying, I'm going with the glory, you got to go with the glory. Like I was literally saying, I'm going with the glory. Like, I'm like, I want to go with the glory, Lord. I'm going to go with the glory. And then that's when he told me to sell the house. Or yeah, my husband said, and God said, no, you're going with the glory. You're going with the glory. And I'm like, and when we bought the bus, her name was not glory girl. Her name was the power bus. It was going to be the power bus because my husband builds power lines and she has a big, like almost like elect, elect, like a, a lightning bolt that's bright yellow on the side. And then of course the power of God, the power of the Holy spirit, the power, you know, the power of Jesus, the power of the blood, the power of his name, just the power. So it was like the power bus. And then when I walked in and, um, you know, after being in it for a minute, I was like, no, this is the glory girl. Like the Holy Spirit's like, no, this is the glory girl. And so, um, so that's how she got her name. And, um, 
the glory girl and so when i was so when we got stuck in texas god had preordained that he orders our steps like i said and so liberty had done she was going to do um she basically was going to oklahoma and so um she did her first releasing the wells of jacob the, yeah releasing the wells of jacob in um adair oklahoma which was only 30 minutes away from miami and so I was able, we were able to go to this revival in my, and, um, you know, to, to Liberty's revival. And as soon as I received the, I mean, it, it, it just changed my, it changed my life. Like I received the water from the well of Jacob and I, you know, I received it. And then all of a sudden, you know, um, Jeff, we had to do a couple, you know, we, we went back to Washington and, and grab some stuff from storage, some tools and stuff, his work tools and stuff, and some like, some clothes, basically put some stuff in here in the Glory Girl, and then we left and came to California. And I spent some time with my daughter and my, grand, my grandbaby. We spent a little bit of time in Washington before we made the move down here for him to go to work. But, um, but anyway, it's been a journey, you guys. It has been a journey. It has been something, and, and, and like I said, and, and, and God is so amazing because my sister moved from Southern California to Vacaville, Washington, well, Vacaville, California, just a year and a half ago. Well, my husband's hall, you know, electric, electric hall or union brother, bro, whatever, the brotherhood hall. <laughs> anyway, the union hall is in Vacaville. And so I called them trying to get a spot, you know, in, in the RV park. There's only two nice RV parks in that area. And I was like, I'm not staying in a... I'm not saying in a dump. Like, I'm not, I'm just not going to do it. Like, I'm not going to, something that was, you know, that's not safe, basically. That's called wisdom. And so, it had to be, you know, safe. And so, there was, uh, there was two places and then as we're driving, they said, nope, we don't have any room. You have to get on the waiting list. And I was like, all right then. And so, we were going to go and stay in Lodi and, you know, which was an hour from Vacaville. And um, anyway, they called us the day before we were here, got here, and she says, oh, we have an opening for you, and so I went straight to Vacaville, I was able to see my sister that night, um, and, or the next morning, or whatever, I don't remember how it worked, but, but anyway, I think it was the next morning, because we were tired, but anyway, you know, so, so now I'm over here in this area with my sister, you know, um, but I've had to move, so I went from there, I met a, a, a friend, her name is Sarah, and, um, and she was over, you know, she's over there in Vacaville. We're not in Vacaville anymore. God has moved us around. And so we've had to go with the glory. Well, the first time that we had left Vacaville and we had to move to Watsonville, he had told, like, like God said, just trust me. Because I was like, I want to be close to my sister because, like, I don't know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And I need to be close to my sister. You know, I was all prepped. My house, I in my house, I had a whole bedroom that was prepped with everything that I needed. My boat was ready. <laughs> my boat was ready, as Liberty says, like, get your boat ready and so my boat was ready I mean not completely I was still adding but I had a whole bedroom that was full of I had like my husband even said you need to move some water to another room before it falls through the ceiling like you know so I had cases and cases of water you know spread out through my house you know in one one bedroom he's like nope you gotta you have to move some to another bedroom I had I had four spare spare bedrooms like I know we didn't need that big of a house anyway but um but anyway, just saying, I went from that to this, you know, so that was a huge adjustment, you guys. That's going with the glory. That's just trusting God. He says, you're going to be so much happier. He told me, you're going to be so much happier. Trust me. I mean, he was telling me all these things. I can't tell you everything, but, you know, I'm already an hour and 37 minutes in. I'm sorry, but it just is what it is. But, um, but anyway, so God said, just trust me. When I had to leave Vacaville and go to Watsonville, I was so upset because it was like two and a half hours away. And, um, and I, so I just trusted him. And then it was on that trip just a couple days later. He said, I need you to release your video. I need you to release your first video. And I struggled and I cried. And I was like, I can't, I can't do it, Lord. I can't do this. Like, no, like I'm not the right person for this. Like you, you're crazy, Lord. I was telling God, you're crazy. You got the wrong chick. Like this is not, no, I'm a mess. I am such a mess. I'm like, Lord, Daddy, I've only been sober for three months. You can't just throw me in there like that. Like, no. Like, I'm not I, I'm not good. I, I'm, I, I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Like, what if I relapse again? What if I, you know, like, what? I can't go. I can't go talk to your kids. I smoke cigarettes. I can't, you know, I'm like, I can't go preaching, you know, or whatever. And he's just like, 
Emily, Emily, Emily. When are you just going to trust me? When are you just going to trust and do what I ask and just, and just, just do what I ask? You know what I mean? Like quit fighting me. Because it had been, you know, I had already been fighting him and just, but no, when he was serious and he was like, and then he shook me, there was an earthquake that morning and he was telling me to release, shake, rattle, and roll. He was telling me, I have it all journaled. I had, I even on my first or second video, I talk about it and I had just found Julie Green, like somebody, my sister had sent me a video of her for the first time. I'd never seen her before and it was right when I made, right, right when I made my first video or second video. And he told me to release shake rattle and roll and i wasn't doing it and he told me for days and he he was on me he was on me he was like no you need to release the video you need to release it you need to release it and i was just like and he specifically was shake rattle and roll that he had given me back in 2020 and i was just like no like i can't you know and and, and then he gave me an earthquake he shook and and so an earthquake and it was at 9 59 a.m and 9 59 is mine and god's numbers and then it was right there right where I was. And so anyway, so then I get on, um, Julie Green, I just found her the day before, like I said, and I, and I found out that she, that she did prophecies every day because of the first video, first video that I watched or whatever. And then this, the, the day that he, she, in her prophecy, she says, shake, rattle and roll. And I'm just like, <laughs> okay, Lord. Okay. So God had been using, so God basically put her in, put her in my life at that period of time to um like i'm saying like god has everything lined up he has lined everything up he has he he has if you are a child of god and you love the lord with all with all of your heart no matter what kind of mess you're in he will use you he ordains your steps he orders them you are his and he will make a way for you where there is no way and he will use you. He will use anybody who wants to be used by him. He will use you. And my biggest prayer, and I, and, and that was another thing. I asked him, I said, use me in a mighty way, Lord. Use me in a mighty way. Give me faith that will move mountains. I want to move mountains with my faith. And that's just, you know, that's what I prayed on a regular for years. I'm talking years, you guys. I mean, I'm not that old, but you know what I mean? For years. Even in my sin, even my addictions, I was saying, use me, God. Use my life. Use my story. Use me. Pick me. Like, pick me, Dad. But not, I didn't mean like this. I meant like, you know, just use me. Like, use me at work to, to bless people or use me, you know, to, 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 not, I didn't expect this. But he knew all along. You know, God knew all along. And this is what, back in 2000, when I got baptized, or 2001 or whenever, sorry, I don't know, whenever 9-11 was, you know, four days before that, I had that vision. So he was, right after I got baptized, it was like he knew that I, that it was going to be a prophetic thing, you know, and now, I mean, I've, I hear him. He gives me words all the time, uh, you know, and there's so many words I, I, and I should be on here more often and why I'm not the enemy, you know, I mean, I don't know. I get busy as well. I mean, it's not just that, but you know, I should really be on here more and I, and, um, and I'm sorry that I haven't been and maybe I'll do better now, now that I'm talking about it. And, you know, um, and I, and I, I had to get this video out you guys, because it's been, it's been eating me up. Like God has been telling me to do it for a long time. And he said, I'll find freedom, you know, and just getting out there, putting myself out here and put, give, give, telling my life story and who I am and what God has done for me and how much he loves me and he loves you. He will use you no matter where you are, no matter what mess you're in, no matter your struggles. He loves you. And don't let anybody lie to you in that religious spirit. Don't let that religious spirit in and lie to you and tell you otherwise because it's not true. God will lead you. He will help you. He will deliver you. He will set you free. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're going through, he loves you. And he will never leave you. He will never forsake you no matter what. No matter what. When I was doing meth, I had a prayer cloth in my bra. I was running around. I mean, I never sold my body or anything. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't have to. He, like I said, even in, my, even in my drug days, he provided my drugs. I mean, he didn't. The enemy did. But you know what I'm saying? I didn't ever go without. I've never gone without. 
and I never had to do anything stupid. I never stole from my drugs. I never ri robbed anybody. I never sold my body. I never, I never did any of that by the grace of God. You know what I mean? But I would pray. I had a prayer cloth that my dad had, an, had his, his um, church family or he went to an anointed um, conference or I don't even know where he got it. But anyway, I carried that in my bra next to my heart. And I just trusted that that prayer cloth was going to get me through. It was going to bring me to wherever, you know, it was going to keep me safe. It was going to protect me. And I remember I was driving with some, with, with my boyfriend's cousin one time. He was just, he was gone. And he was, it was the most scariest thing in my life. The most scariest, I, I was, I had my, I was in the back seat and I was pressing that prayer cloth into my into my heart into my chest and I'm saying nope I'm not going out this way I'm not going out this way nope nope and I was just like praying I'm like oh Jesus just you know just keep me safe and you know whatever and so um I mean I, I didn't have I wasn't I didn't speak in tongues then not yet and so um yeah but he kept me safe he kept me safe I mean I've almost died a couple times like I said throughout my whole addiction God knows the end from the beginning that's my whole point. And that's what it keeps telling me too. When I try to, you know, when I was going through that whole religious, when he had to smack me silly to get the religion out of me, basically, you know, love, love taps, <laughs> that's very, love taps. But anyway, yes, um, he had to, he had to knock the, the religion out of me. You guys, I lived it for so many, for, for so long, but I knew that he still loved me. I even, even though, I mean, I would just, but I just felt like I was dirty, unworthy, you know, but I knew what his word said, but it was hard to believe, you know what I mean? And then there's so much scripture that, you know, then, then you go here and people preach and, and teach, and then they're teaching this way and, but they're twisting God's word. And, and then, so then you, then you're like getting brainwashed by that. And it's just like, wait a minute, but that really doesn't line up with this scripture here because, and then this scripture, it seems like they got twisted a little bit and then. But then when you have the Holy Spirit and he starts speaking to you and, and, and you're and you're like, you hear the Holy Spirit and you know that you know that you know. And then he gives you a confirmation here and a confirmation there and a confirmation there and a confirmation here. We don't have time anymore, you guys, to be dealing and messing with this religious nonsense. The religion, spirit of religion, get it out in Jesus name. Get it out in Jesus name. And so anyway, um, this that's my life, you guys. That's my life story. And um, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I don't have choice but um you know i love you guys and i hope that you continue to um just just pray for me i pray for you guys every single day i pray for you always i'm always praying for you guys and um no matter what happens you know no matter no matter what you're going through and no matter what we have to go through no matter what we have to face um God has us regardless, no matter, no matter what you're going through, God will see you through. If you trust him, if you really, really, really deep down in your heart and you know, you know that you know that you know that God's got you, that's all that matters. If you really give him your faith and your trust and you believe that he will work out everything for your good, his word doesn't lie. And no matter what you're going through right now, he will see you through. My life has been a mess. A mess and I haven't even told you at all like for the most part I mean I can't I, it's been an hour and 45 minutes and I'm sorry it's been so long but you could break it up <laughs> hopefully you know I'll put it in the description box or something break it up if you have to it's a long testimony but you know it, it it's my testimony and um, I need to get it out and um, I pray that you all have made it this far um, but just you know we just got to be careful what we are, you know, what we, when, you know, who we are judging, how we are judging. God is the only judge. And we have to remember that always. And that'll knock the spirit of religion right out of you. Let God do it. Let God be the judge because he's the judge over all. He looks at the Jesus Christ. He looks at the heart of man. Remember that the heart is where it all starts. And God looks at the heart of not at, you know, we're always going to, we're always going to have to fight our fleshly, our, our flesh. That's just a given, you know, 
some people have to fight their flesh with food some people you know fight their flesh with cigarettes some people fight their flesh with alcohol some people fight their flesh with with um even even in your 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 thoughts your you know covetousness and jealousy and gossip and a sin is a sin is a sin is a sin and so that's kind of my, my point and so we have to be careful not to judge anybody for anything because we are all sinners you know we are we, we, we all will sin you know and judging is a is is no bueno <laughs> judging is no bueno because you'll find yourself right in that same situation and i've been there done that many times in my life and um, i've learned that the hard way and so no matter what do not judge anybody by what they say by what they look by what they're doing on the outside you put them in god's hands and let god especially if they are anointed you don't know you you may not know you might question if somebody's anointed or not to do a certain call for God and you might be like questioning but the Bible says do not touch my anointed do not judge them do not know and so be careful who you're talking bad about um don't talk about about anybody period don't talk about about anybody but just be very very cautious and careful there's a lot of people uh, there's so much judgment going on in the body of Christ and people talking about I mean it's it's all over there and and it's all over the social media and it's just so sad you guys and so we need to really stay far from that and um and just you don't know you don't know god looks at the heart of man he uses who he wants when he wants how he wants and um you know just really quick in um second corinthians um let's see here i want to read this to you i forget where it is for crying out loud um, well maybe I won't because I don't remember where it is but I know it's in 2 Corinthians um, oh here it is I should know I knew, I knew it was 12 I knew it was 12 I'm just brain farting okay just really quick um, Second Corinthians and twelve. This is Paul talking. Okay, I will say this because these. Ex this is um, in verse seven, starting in seven, twelve and seven. I will say this because these experiences I had were so tremendous. God was afraid I might be puffed up by them, so I was given a physical condition which has been a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to hurt and bother me and prick my pride. Three different times I begged God to make me well again. Um. In nine, each time he said no, but I am with you, and that is all you need. My power shows up best in weak people. Now I am glad to boast about how weak I am. I am glad to be a demonstration of Christ's power instead of showing off my own power and abilities, since I know it is all for Christ's good. I am quite happy about the thorn. And about insults and hardships, persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The less I have, the more I depend on him. And that pretty much sums up my life. <laughs> and so, God bless you guys. I hope that, you know, and, and you just got to remember, if God is for you, who can be against you? And God is all you need. All you need. Jesus, don't forget what he did for you. Don't forget the, the don't forget the blood and what he did on that cross. Don't take it for granted. Don't take his blood for granted because his blood covers all things, not just some, all things. And so just know that no matter what you're going through, no matter how far you feel that you've fallen from grace or how far you feel like you, you know, you're you've gone into sin. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off and say, I'm going to keep going because I love Jesus and he loves me and I'm forgiven by the, by, you know, by his, uh, by, by, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. He died for me. He died for my sins. He died for me. And don't forget that. That is so important. Don't take the blood of Jesus. Don't take the cross for granted. Don't take the cross for granted in Jesus' name. I love you guys, and um, Jesus loves you so much. God loves you so much, and I just hope and pray that this will help somebody because 
I'm not on here for nothing. I haven't gone through what I've gone through for nothing. And I know that God didn't put me through hell for nothing. And those are his words. He said, I didn't let you go through hell for nothing. And so I pray to God. I know that he will use this, that it'll bless somebody. And I pray that it does in Jesus name. And I'm going to come back in a second and release a word um, because I need to do that. But um, I love you guys. And um, just be blessed and know that God loves you more than you could ever imagine. No matter what, no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, he loves you and he wants to use you for his glory. He wants to use you for his glory. Let him and be bold. Be bold for him. Be bold for Jesus. I love you guys. Have a good day.